Hi everyone, welcome back to Dentizen. Today we are here with new video on histopathology diagram of epithelial dysplasia. Before we begin, I want you to subscribe to Dentizen. Also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. That will motivate me to make more such videos for you. Coming to histopath of epithelial dysplasia. Dys, dysplastic means disordered epithelium. So let's quickly recall all the features of dysplastic epithelium starting from the basal cell layer of the epithelium. So the first feature is there is loss of polarity of the basal cells. That is basal cells have lost their origin orientation so loss of polarity of basal cells these cells have increased in number so that is the next feature that is basilar cell hyperplasia now to accommodate these increased number of basal cells red ridges become broad so that is broad red ridges broad or bulbous or teardrop shape or drop shape red ridges there is loss in the layered arrangement of the cells so that is loss of stratification within the cells we can see the spaces so that is the next feature loss of cohesion we can see disordered keratin formation so that is next feature this keratosis now let's see the features of cytological atypia there is increase in nuclear content so there is increased nuclear cytoplasmic ratio within the nuclei nucleoli become prominent and some of these nuclei may take excessively deep color deep staining nuclei that is known as nuclear hyperchromatism hyper means more chroma means color now these cells and nuclei may show different sizes and shapes so that is the next feature cellular and nuclear pleomorphism that is different sizes and shapes of cells there is increased number of mitotic figures there is presence of mitotic figures in superficial layers that is known as superficial mitosis Along with that, there is presence of atypical mitotic figures, which is also known as abnormal mitosis. Now, let's quickly draw all these features in the diagram. So, first we have broad red ridges. Within the broad red ridges, we have to show basilar cell hyperplasia. So, basal cells are cuboidal or low columnar shaped cells. You can draw them like this. Now, because it is basilar cell hyperplasia, so we have to draw more layers. We'll show one more layer. We have already shown the feature of broad red ridges. Next, we have to show basilar cell, loss of polarity of basilar cells. So we'll show different orientation of nuclei within these basal cells now above this we have to show dysplastic cells they, which are extending till the mid of the spinal cell layer because it is moderate epithelial dysplasia so we have to extend these features up to the mid of the spinal cell layer somewhere till here so these cells are of different sizes and shapes So we'll make them of different sizes and shapes. Now we have to show next feature that is loss of stratification. Layered arrangement is lost. And we have to show loss of cohesion. That is presence of spaces between the cells. So next feature is dyskeratosis. That is presence of keratinization in individual cells or single cell keratinization the next feature is increased nuclear cytoplasmic ratio where we can show increased size of nucleus difference then we have to show nuclear hyperchromatism we can show it by dark staining nuclei in some of the cells then we have to show Prominent nucleoli can be shown within some nuclei. So that can be shown by dark blue color. Then we have to show superficial mitosis, presence of mitosis in these superficial layers. Then we can show abnormal mitotic figures. And in the remaining cells, we can show different sizes and shapes of nuclei. 
So above this, all the layers are of uniform size and shape. So we have to draw them of almost the same size and shape, which will depict the normal epithelium above this level. Stratum spinosum. Above this, we have stratum granulosum. Above this, we have to show keratin. Now, in epithelial dysplasia, we can see hyperkeratosis. So, we can draw it like this hyperkeratosis. And all these cells have almost same size and shape of nuclei and almost same location so because this is normal epithelium. Now we can also show some inflammatory cells in the connective tissue and we can show collagen fibers. And we can fill the background with the eosin in the connective tissue. Now, let's quickly label all these features now. Loss of polarity of basal cells, basal cell hyperplasia, broad retinitis, loss of epithelial stratification, loss of cohesion. Discaritosis, increased nucleocytoplasmic ratio, prominent nucleoli, nuclear hyperchromatism. Now for cellular pleomorphism, we can show two cells of different sizes and shapes. Then we have superficial mitosis. And then we have abnormal mitosis. Now we can also label inflammatory cells. We can also label hyperkeratosis. Now to show that it is moderate epithelial dysplasia, we can depict the changes from the basal cell layer to the mid of the spinous cell layer by an arrow. So that is the diagram of moderate epithelial dysplasia. That is all for this video. If you really like the video, tap on the like button. Keep watching videos on Dentozen. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.